Hello fellow travelers and welcome back to Our Pigs Adventure. My name is Cynthia and today we are going to process my turkey. That's right, I wanted to know how many meals I could get out of a turkey. So I gave the turkey in my freezer an eviction notice and got it in some jars and in our bellies. So if you're ready, press the like button and let's get to work. I was so pleased at how this turkey finished out. It looks absolutely gorgeous. Look at Dixie's happy face. She knows she's going to get a treat here in a few minutes and she was enjoying the smell. The turkey came out juicy and succulent. I am so glad to get it out of the freezer and into our bellies and also into some jars. I put it in the roaster after thawing it in the refrigerator for a few days. This was our dinner the night that we roasted it. We had some collard greens, sweet potatoes, and some cut pieces of turkey. Absolutely perfect. And Mr. Biggs thought it was like Thanksgiving. It was delicious. We ended up with three nice huge bags of meat for the freezer. Next up, I started on my bone broth. All the bones were roasted in the oven and then thrown back into the Nesco roaster with all of the juices from the turkey and kitchen scraps that I had saved in a little bag in the freezer. Remember when you're making your bone broth to put in a tablespoon of vinegar to draw the calcium out of the bones that you're using to make your bone broth. After all the picking and sorting and boiling and roasting, we ended up with two huge containers of bone broth. And we ended up with two, well, one and a half containers of scrap turkey meat. Let's get this in a jar. Going in my turkey vegetable soup, I've got carrots, garlic, tomato. I've got mushroom, zucchini. This is onion under here and some chopped spinach. This spinach was on sale for 99 cents a bag at Aldi's. The spinach and kale help bump up the iron content in all of your soups and stews. So I put kale or spinach in every soup or stew that I make because I am chronically anemic and during harder times when you're under more stress, anemia can actually get worse. So this is a great way to bump up your iron in all of your dishes. Let's get started. I'm gonna bring you with me and fill up one jar. Is every jar going to be the same? No, it's not. They're gonna look different. So in each jar, I want a little bit of each ingredient. I like to pack my jars super full of vegetables because I can always add more broth if I want to, but I can't add more vegetables or turkey unless I have something growing fresh in the garden. If I do have things growing in the garden, I can always put these in with what I have and stretch that jar even further. Okay. There we go. We're looking pretty good. I've got quite a bit of turkey in here and quite a bit of vegetable. Now I'm going to just add some broth. And I do a lot of things with my fingers because I don't know why, it's just what I do. I'm gonna add some broth in there. And I'm gonna give this a good inch of headspace because that's how I pressure can, always with one inch of headspace. Okay, let's put it on time lapse and fill the rest of these up. I learned how to can meats and soups and stews from Mrs. Kathleen Sisler of Terra Alta, West Virginia. She was a wonderful woman and she just let me hang on her apron strings for the whole five years that I knew her. I absolutely adored her. Her pressure canner was terrifying. It was one of the old, old school ones and I was literally scared of that thing, but she made it seem so easy. Those five years shaped who I am today. I know I've said this before, but if you're new to the channel, canning is messy. It is so messy and that's okay. That's why I leave the towel down under the jars. Also, I don't like the jars to be bumped while I'm putting anything in them. I don't like them on the stainless steel because something might happen to them. So we just give them a nice little cushion with this towel, but 
yep, it's definitely a messy process. And I could probably be cleaner about it, but eh. I have my heat turned on medium for the canner. Add a nice big splash of vinegar to that because I want to make sure they don't get any scale or lime scale on my jars. Quite a bit of broth left. I have like a little bit in that container and a whole one. So I may end up pivoting and just doing some bone broth in jars and not the soup. It just kind of depends on what I have left after round one for veggies. And anything that's left over, I'll work into my meal plan this week. I'll saute zucchini if we have any left. I will um, make up those carrots. I'll do whatever I need to do to make sure that nothing goes to waste. I do have a whole nother pack of carrots in the, in the fridge. So we'll just have to see how that goes. So my rims are looking pretty good. The broth is greasy. I don't really mind that the broth is greasy because if we were to have a situation where we were in a calorie deficit, I would definitely appreciate the fact that there was some fat in the soup to help feed my brain and my cells. I know for sure that there won't be 26 of these beautiful jars when I'm finished. For every one jar that I put up, that is a full meal for Mr. Biggs and myself. If we have any garden veggies at the time when I open it, I'll be able to add those. I'll be able to add some rice or maybe some gluten-free noodles, quinoa, barley even, if we have that. I'll be able to add to it, you could even um, thicken it down like a stew with a little bit of cornstarch that I have in my prepper pantry and make it into like a really hearty, do. All right, let's get these jars in the canner. This water is just barely warm at this point. I've got my label facing forward and the divot to line my lid up is in the front, so we're good. You want your jars and your water to be approximately the same temperature. If you put cold jars into hot water, you're guaranteed to bust a jar. My calculations were absolutely correct. Seven wide mouth quarts fit in now. And I went with wide mouth this time. I don't have a whole lot of wide mouth lids, so that's an issue. But I really wanted to stuff these big jars nice and full of veggies and turkey so that we would have enough for Mr. Biggs and myself when we open one jar. Let's get the lid on. First, let's make sure I can see some daylight. Daylight unlocked. Next up, we want to make sure that our arrow lines up with the divot here, and it does. The lock down in place. You're going to want to go opposite sides. Let's see, like this side is super high. What you're going for is an even distribution of the lid all the way around. Ah, that's better. And the great thing about having that kind of meals ready to go on the shelf is that if we were in a situation where we couldn't heat up our food, which I don't know why that would happen, but anyway, we would be able to just open the jar and eat it straight out of the jar. I'm gonna turn my vent so that it's away from my microwave so that I don't boil my microwave for 90 minutes. These are gonna go for 90 minutes. When we start venting, we're gonna wait seven minutes, then we're gonna put the pressure gauge on. We're gonna watch our pressure. When it comes up to 10 pounds of pressure, which for my area is 10 pounds of pressure. I live almost at sea level here in Florida. It is very flat here. So I only need 10 pounds of pressure. And when it comes up to 10 pounds of pressure, we're gonna can these for 90 minutes. Whatever is in your jar that takes the longest amount of time to can is your canning time. So turkey takes 90 minutes. That's what we're gonna do. From our turkey bone broth, I got 14 jars to put in my prepper pantry. This is a turkey and vegetable jar. I have quite a few turkey and vegetable jars. 
If anyone has any questions about how to can anything, I've been canning for a really long time, over 30 years, and I'll be happy to answer any questions about canning or food preservation. So go ahead and leave me a comment down below. I would love to answer your questions. It's editing me here. Don't worry, I just straighten my hair. Sometimes it's curly and sometimes it's straight. Next time you see me, it'll probably be curly. We ended up with about 14 jars of turkey with vegetables and bone broth. I am very excited to see these. I don't really know the calorie count on these, but you can see we've got a nice layer of fat here. And then we have our nutritious vegetables. All the nutrients from the vegetables when they're pressure canned stay inside the jar. They actually go into the broth. So you've got nice amount of calcium, iron, and your vitamins and minerals from your veggies. They look really good on the shelf. Let me back up here a little bit. This is taco meat, which is turkey taco meat. And then I've got my turkey soup. And that's chili. And this is beef chili. They look great on the shelf. So this is actually 28 meals. One for me, one for Mr. Biggs, 28 meals. Next meal that we got out of this turkey is this turkey BLT salad. Just some baby tomatoes. I have feta in my fridge, so I like feta better than I do cheddar. Got a piece of bacon in each salad. This is the last little cucumber from our garden. The tomatoes came from the store. We've got the turkey and we've got bacon and iceberg lettuce and romaine lettuce. So that is another meal that we got out of our turkey. Southwest egg roll in a bowl is my favorite way to use leftover turkey. A delicious filling of cabbage, carrots, corn, black beans, spices on your turkey with a little bit of cheese on the top, some hot sauce and sour cream to finish it. It's the perfect way to use up leftover turkey. Thank you so much for staying until the end with me. I hope you got something out of the video. I am always looking for leftover turkey ideas and leftover turkey recipes. So if you have a family fave, leave it down below. I hope you got some great ideas on what you can make with leftover turkey. If you're returning to my channel, thank you so much for your support as always. If you're new here, I would love to have you. So hit that subscribe button and hang out with me in the kitchen. Thank you again, everybody. And remember, life is an adventure, so enjoy your journey. Bye, guys.